Officially, Zachary Taylor died of a stomach flu. Some, however, believe he was poisoned. Taylor was part of the Whig Party and was opposed to the expansion of slavery. He was also adamantly committed to keeping the Union together and threatened to hang the leaders of any state that seceded. When he was nominated, Taylor was supposed to be a compromise candidate as he wasn't a political man. In fact, he'd never even voted in an election, nor had any presidential ambitions. His quick political ascent was solely thanks to his service in the Mexican-American War. His own party, the Whigs, thought he would be easy to control, and as Taylor was a slave owner, Democrats thought he'd be sympathetic to their cause. It turned out that Taylor had much stronger opinions than anyone imagined, and despite being a slave owner, he didn't support the expansion of slavery into new territories. This led many to believe that he was poisoned by Southern Democrats. In particular, Jefferson Davis was suspected. While he'd become the president of the Confederacy a decade later, at the time Davis was a senator. Davis, a Democrat, disagreed with Taylor on many political issues, yet the two had a close relationship as Davis had previously married Taylor's daughter. In one letter, Taylor openly acknowledged their different political views but said he wouldn't let it cause a rift. Davis regularly met with Taylor for dinners at the White House. Officially, this is taken as evidence of a good relationship, but conspiracy theorists allege that it put Davis in the perfect position to perform the assassination. Theories around Taylor's death remained so pervasive that his body was exhumed to be tested for arsenic in 1991, 140 years after his death. There was no evidence of poisoning as arsenic levels were far too low. Conspiracy theorists claim that the tests were flawed, but scientists say his death was caused by cholera morbus or acute gastroenteritis, likely brought on by the Washington sewage system, the same one that's believed to have killed William Henry Harrison nearly a decade prior. Between Harrison and Taylor's presidencies, President James K. Polk also came down with an illness, which has now been attributed to the sewage system though he recovered. The fact that Vice President Millard Fillmore, like Taylor, was also hostile toward the expansion of slavery and had more of a political background than Taylor, cast more doubt on the idea the South was behind Taylor's death. However, conspiracy theorists argue that Fillmore was far more lenient on the South than Taylor would have been. Some even argue that if Taylor had lived, he would have waged war on the South long before the Civil War took place, though others such as biographer Albert Smith strongly disagree. Jefferson Davis and Southern sympathizers are not the only suspects in the death of President Taylor. Another theory involves the Catholic Church. In fact, Taylor's successor, Millard Fillmore, received a letter claiming that a Jesuit official was responsible. That will be discussed in a future video in this series, looking at conspiracy theories about the Catholic Church. But before that is part three, on the many theories surrounding the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. If you haven't already, watch the first video in this series, discussing the conspiracy theory around the attempted assassination on Andrew Jackson. To support the channel, consider subscribing or donating on Patreon. Patreon link in the description below.